Welcome to Age of Noob everyone, and to the first season of Age of Empires 4. Season 1 of the Festival of Ages has a ton of new features, balance changes, bug fixes, mods, and much more that we need to get up to speed on. Here's the summary of everything important that you need to know, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's start with the general changes. We've all had access to the content editor tool via the public preview, but now everyone can access this and begin modding themselves. Although the patch is live right now, the ranked season will officially begin on April 13th. Global queue was added to see all units and technologies being trained and researched, and hotkey improvements, although not fully comprehensive, are here as well. Furthermore, we can finally see the full visible map after the game ends, choose a random sieve in the dropdown, patrol with our military units, and play a few additional Art of War missions. Perhaps one of the more controversial changes made was the introduction of a queue dodging system, in which map dodgers won't be able to queue in increments of 5, 10, 30, and 60 minutes depending on how many times they dodge. The developers mentioned that they have a long-term solution in plan, but I suspect this won't sit very well with some of the player base for the time being. We'll have to wait and see. The patch notes go through a whole slew of mods that were added, but I've already covered these in my mods video, so check that out if you haven't already to get up to speed. Alright, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the general balance changes first, followed by the civilization specific ones. Field construction is heavily nerfed for the Springles, Mangonels, and Traction Trebuchets. Scouts can now attack at twice the speed against Huntables, which is an indirect buff to the Roos. One of the bigger changes introduced is the massive buff to hunting overall. Villager carry capacity is now increased from 10 to 25, and if you've watched my video on the old survival techniques, you'd know how much of a massive impact that has on collection rates. To offset this, survival techniques is nerfed to the ground. I'd have to test it first to tell you folks something definitively, but my guess is that the technology is now absolute trash that won't be worth picking up in most cases. Water units got a whole bunch of changes as well, but I think the most important one is that the arrow ships will no longer be able to fire while moving. There are a ton of buffs applied that I'll show you now quickly, but it's tough to gauge the power of naval units without seeing them in action. I'll follow up with a video if there's anything noteworthy. Moving on to buildings, those that are under construction now receive an additional 50% damage, which is a big change to castle drops, both defensively and offensively. Building keeps and stonewall towers take longer now as well. Boiling oil gets a significant nerf to both its cost and research time. Geometry gets a massive buff as it's moved to the Siege Workshop, its cost reduced by more than threefold, and its research time halved. Hence, it's now an absolute must to pick up for both rams and trebuchets in the current meta. Siege Works gets the opposite treatment, getting nerfed and moved to the university instead. I think the cost now is a bit too steep to be honest, but the impact of this change is nowhere near as important as geometry, so I'm okay with this. Alright, now let's dive into the civilization specific changes, starting with the Abbasids. As we've known before, their Orchard bonus is now nerfed to 100 food. However, they do get some big buffs to both of their Camel units. Their stats are increased across the board with the exception of bonus damage against Spears for the Camel Archers. Furthermore, Camel Barding gets a big buff as well, halving its research time and reducing its cost by more than threefold, just like Geometry. That said, it only affects Camel Riders now though. The Golden Age now applies to all production buildings and not just military ones, and this has important implications on villager production speed. Moreover, the House of Wisdom receives a sizable reshuffle. From the economy wing, agriculture, which lets villagers farm 15% faster, gets a big buff. I'll have to test the payback time for this, but given that you can pick this up in the Feudal Age now, I suspect that it will be a viable option in games where you can safely boom. From the trade wing, Grand Bazaar gets the same treatment, moving to the Feudal Age. I'm unsure if this matters to be honest, as the trade wing is usually still skipped upon, but this change could prove useful in certain maps where training matters or perhaps in team games. From the military wing, Boot Camp moves to the Feudal Age, which I think is one hell of a change to make. Again, I'll have to test to see how good they'll be, but this makes the Abbasid infantry scaling scarier, especially given how cheap the technology is now. Camel Rider Shield and Camel Support swap places as well, which I'm okay with. Camel Support in the Castle Age alongside Boot Camp's buffs would have been way too OP, so I'm glad they made this shuffle as well. Honestly, I'm not sure the Abbasids needed this many buffs given their healthy win rate, but let's take a look at the other Sif changes first before making this conclusion. The Chinese have been sitting at the bottom of the win rate table since the last patch, so they'll naturally get some changes here as well. Ancient Techniques gets a nerf to its cost and research time, but it's not that significant. Some other bug fixes were also done to clean up the Chinese. The Chinese dynasty buildings, namely the village, the pagoda, and the granary, are no longer dynasty locked and can be built without said requirements anymore. There are some balance changes around them as well given the lifted timings. The supervision, production, and research speed is reduced from 200% to 150%, and the official cost change from 150 food to 100 100 food and 50 gold. I'm not sure if these changes are enough to lift the Chinese up from their abysmal win rate to be honest, given that they nerfed some things as well. We'll find out in a few weeks if they need real buffs to them, which I suspect will happen. 
the Delhi Sultan that gets his Sanctity Gold bonus reduced down to 50%, as well as their starting wood from 250 to 200. Thankfully, Herbal Medicine moved to the Castleage as well, and their Orchard bonus again is significantly reduced here. It's not all bad though, as they finally get some much needed bug fixes, especially for its Tower of Victory. The Delhi Sultanate was so strong to the point that it was almost always banned in N4C, so I don't think anyone here would disagree with these changes. The English finally get a change after a long while. The Man at Arms get a big training time buff from 22 seconds to 15, as well as their Vanguard Man at Arms armor increased from 2 to 3. The Abbey of Memes healing rate increased from 4 health per 1.5 seconds to 6 health per 1 second, which, agreed to much of the community, is still trash and not worth to get up to the next age with. They'll have to rethink the way Abbey of Kings works if they truly want a viable choice. The English do get a 50 wood buff to their start from 150 wood to 200, and their setup camp ability is nerfed so that they cannot be set up during combat. Honestly, since they've already removed the healing effect during combat in the earlier patch, this change doesn't really matter that much. The French have practically no changes applied to them apart from bug fixes. The Arbalester's Pavis now correctly adds 5 armor instead of setting it to 5. There are some other cleanups, but nothing else is noteworthy. The Holy Roman Empire's infamous Regnitz Cathedral receives a nerf, as it can only house 2 relics now instead of 3. Its counterpart, the Burgrave Palace, gets a 400% training speed bonus to their infantry rather than the batch of 5 it used to be. Its research discount is improved to 30% and its research speed increased by 30% as well. The Palace of Swabia's villager production speed is nerfed down to 66%, which is also a welcome change. One of the more important changes is made to the Inspired Warriors, as their duration is now doubled from 30 seconds to a whole minute. I have to definitely test this now, as the 30 seconds is a massive change in my opinion. When we add Marching Drill's cost buff to this, their infantry are much scarier now, especially given the 10% speed bonus is now given to the prelates as well. There are some other cleanup changes made as well, but the aforementioned were the only noteworthy ones. Overall, I like the Regnitz nerf and the other changes, though I feel like the Holy Roman Empire will be slightly overpowered compared to the other civilizations. Once again, we'll see in a few weeks. The Mongols get an improved version of textiles added to the castle age to add 50 more HP to its villagers. Its landmark town center can now be packed at maximum population to be moved around, and improved biology is slightly nerfed down to 10%. The Kagan's Palace also now produces Mangadai in 90 seconds instead of 77 seconds. Other than that, there are some other small changes that were made that aren't too noteworthy. And finally, the Rus Warrior Monks get a military buff, in which their weapon range is almost tripled as well as their charge range increased. The Horse Archer Position Technology gets a rework, but it's mostly a nerf. Its bonus range is halved from 2 to 1, but its research time is quicker now. As mentioned before, Bandit Arms bonus range is decreased from 1.5 to 0.5, and their Logia Fishing Ship is significantly nerfed as well, which was aimed at curbing the Logia Fishing Ship rush. Again, there are some other changes here of course, but nothing major. Apart from the balance changes, there's a long, long list of changes made to maps in this generation, so we hope that all of these changes will be for the better, as map generations in Age of Empires 4 have been significantly weak so far. As we all know, with the addition of mods, we'll see a ton of new generated and crafted maps appear, and Mega Random is now officially added to the generated map pool as well. Of course, there are many hotkey changes, UI changes, bug fixes, and much more that you can go through if you're interested. The absolutely awful chat censoring is now also completely removed, so you can now communicate properly in your game. Funnily enough, none of the bad words are also not filtered out at all, so you can technically now type anything. Obviously, this should go without saying, but please be respectful to other players in the game so they don't reintroduce this dysfunctional filter system again. Well, that's all you need to know about the Season 1 changes in Age of Empires 4. I've linked below the patch notes if you'd like to go in-depth for yourself. Special thanks to Henry, Rene, Felix, and Alex for being the first patrons to support the channel. And if you'd like to join them, the link is in the description below. And be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on the ton of new videos that are coming from the new balance changes, so stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching everyone, best of luck in the new ranked season, and see you all in the next one.